Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to Spotlight. I'm Father Jim Corda. Today we're talking about the Oblate Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And joining me is Sister Teresina Rosa and Sister Joyce Canditti. Such Hi, a Father. pleasure to have you both on the show today. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks so much for the invitation. We're not only going to talk about uh, the Oblate Sisters and your charism and your history here in the diocese, but we're also a little later on the show going to talk about Mother Teresa Cassini. Uh, blessed, is it? not Venerable. blessed, venerable. venerable. So we're going to talk yes. about her and give the folks that are with us a nice flavor of uh, your foundress and what a wonderful uh, saint to be that, that she was. Uh, but before we get into our discussion, let's talk about the history of the Oblate Sisters and going back to its founding, uh, obviously in Italy. And let's talk a little bit about that brief history. Well, the, uh, our congregation was founded on February 2nd, 1894, uh, of course, by Mother Teresa Cassini. Uh, she, along with five other women, um, began to live the life with the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. That was the time when they actually, when that all began on that day, February 2nd, 1894. This was in Grotta Ferrata, Italy. And uh, at the time, the, uh, the primary ministry, and still is today, a ministry of prayer. So the sisters were cloistered. It was a, a, a life of prayer and reparation and penance um, for um, the holiness of priest. And it was during, the, um, uh, during those first years when the bishop of the diocese um, had asked a mother to begin some uh, external works. And, um, Mother Teresa understood, I mean, she had a beautiful, uh, I think she had a beautiful ecclesiology. She understood the importance of, of the vocation, marriage, and the importance of a mother in a family. So she thought it would be very good to have her sisters work with um, young women who were to be mothers and to, so that they could then train their children, be the heart of the family, train their children in the faith from very early on. And so that was the very first ministry that, um, that the sisters did, teaching these young mothers so that they, they in turn could cultivate um, vocations, and particularly vocations, to the priests, or at least to instill among, with their children a great esteem and love for priests. Then not long after that, I think it was in the 1920s, that's when, um, again, still under Mother Teresa, uh, we, they began schools for um, young boys or priest seminaries. They were called, um, Sister Teresa, help me if I'm correct, Ipicli Amici di Gesù, or the Little Friends of Jesus. And so these two then were also established to, um, to cultivate uh, uh, the soil, if you will, of, um, of, of the souls of these young boys, so that should they be given a call to the priesthood, that they could, that this would in fact blossom. At the time, it was looked upon. I think uh, it was, you know, people, it was not an accepted idea. It was something totally new for religious women to be conducting free seminaries at the time. But they were successful. Uh, in terms, and then of course from there, the work continued on. Um, uh, even I think, I think eventually again, more ministries began to evolve. When the sisters uh, would uh, would come to know of priests who were poor, sick invalid, maybe you know, recuperating from serious illnesses. So the sisters would naturally then go and cook something, prepare food for them, um, even keep house for them. So these ministries, um, if you will, or services to priests, just gradually evolved as the need of the priest um, you know, would, uh, took shape, if you will. And as we talk about religious uh, communities, we, we always use the word charism because there's, a, there's something that drives the order. That, uh, that kind of facilitates the ministry that, that the religious provide. And so uh, in a nutshell, uh, Sister Teresina, what's the charism of the Oblates? The heart of our charism is really to pray and to offer our lives for the sanctification, the holiness of the diocesan priest. And uh, the most the sacred heart of Jesus revealed himself to our founders and uh, he required prayers 
called the Yosan priests because they are in continual contact with lay people more than anyone else, and therefore they are the channels to which the Lord um, come, uh, comes to us and they bring you know us to Christ. And so the uh, she felt the need uh, of really supporting priests, gathering these women to pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament and plead with him that the priest would be holy so that the people of God would be holy. Let's talk uh, briefly, we've got a few minutes before uh, the ending of our first segment together about your arrival in the United States, in particular here in the Diocese of Youngstown. What can you tell us about that? Well, um, during the war, our mother house in Rome was uh, bombed and damaged. And so we, it had to be repaired. We had no means of repairing it. So a, a few of our sisters said, street relatives here, blood relatives here, brother and sisters, so they asked for help. And they said, well, if you want the help, you need to come yourself. And so two of our sisters, Sister Clara and Sister Karen, arrived in the United States in 1946 on the Feast of the Blessed Mother of Mongarmo, Our Lady of Mongarmo. And so they uh, and then uh, stayed with uh, their relatives, and the relatives introduced them to the bishops, the first bishop to be introduced to was the Bishop of Youngstown, uh, Bishop McFadden. And um, it was really um, amazing. He fell in love with what we did and said, I want your sisters to be part of our, my diocese. The diocese was just born three, you know, in 1943, the diocese was born and they came in 46. So it seemed to be just the proper time and what God wanted from us. And so that's why we came because um, the bishop wanted us to serve uh, the people, the um, Italian people here in the diocese, especially in the Youngstown area. Well, I think th there's a beauty uh, in that as well. Uh, this new diocese was just created, and so the, the Oblate Sisters are part of the history of this diocese and, and how uh, you have continued that legacy, really, of, of your charism of serving uh, children and the priests and, and people uh, in general, and, and how beautiful that is uh, to continue the work of your foundress. And in a few moments, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, Mother Cassini. But before we do that, just one minute, Sister, tell us about uh, when your first visit was here in the Youngstown Diocese, very briefly. I was 14 years old, and I discovered the sisters um, th uh, in a book uh, on all the, that covered all the religious congregations in the United States. Just, uh, I was just graduated from eighth grade and wrote to the sisters and they said come and visit which was something totally un unheard of back then so my family uh, drove my girlfriend and I 10 hours back in those days before all these highways and I was as soon as we drove onto the property I just remember feeling this tremendous sense of peace and thinking to myself wow if if I still want to be a sister at the, when I graduate from high school there's no there's this is the place I just knew instantly that this was home this would be home for me I also, and then what added to that was the, just the tremendous warmth and the family spirit that the sisters had. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, please stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Mark Quinn. As I grew up on the south side of Chicago, the Dominican Sisters of Springfield not only taught me, but formed me in my Catholic faith. The sisters worked for very, very little. Now as they've gotten older, they have no savings to fall back on. And we benefited from their sacrifice. And I think it's time that we recognize that much of what we are today, we are because of what the sisters did for us. It's our turn to help them out in their hour of need. They don't ask for a lot. They embrace a simple life. I owe them so much. That's why I make an annual donation to the Retirement Fund for Religious. Do you remember the religious men and women who shaped your life? Say thank you to them by donating to the Retirement Fund for Religious at your local parish. Join me, share in the care. Johnsons enjoy Friday dinners out, nothing fancy, just time together to reconnect as family. They make sure others eat as well. By giving to Catholic Charities of Youngstown, the Johnsons join other angels who care for those in need regardless of religion or race. 
Show your wings with a gift to Catholic Charities, changing lives one family at a time, providing housing, emergency financial assistance, senior services, and more. Give now at ccdoy.org. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm talking with Sister Teresina and Sister Joyce of the Oblate Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We are going to talk primarily now in this second segment mm -hmm. about Mother Teresa Cassini, the foundress of your order. Tell us a little bit about Mother Cassini. Well, Mother uh, Cassini was born on October 27, 1864, to a wealthy family in Italy. And um, her mom and dad were there. Her mother was uh, Melania Renner and uh, the father Tommaso Cassini. And beautiful people, both of them, but the father was a staunch Catholic. Mm -hmm. He not only knew the faith, he lived the faith. And he took upon himself um, the task of really handing down the faith to Teresa. And so very early in her life, she began showing signs of loving God very, very much. Um, but God took her father away she, when she was only 10 years old mm -hmm. um, on uh, January 19, 1874. And so mother felt the loss of her father mm -hmm. deeply. And she um, knew that now she was left alone to face the problems of life. Mm -hmm. And so she prayed to him, uh, you know, to her father constantly. But God allowed that then her mother wanted to visit her family in Russia, mm -hmm. where they were, her father was working. And so she was placed at a boarding school in Rome. And during that short time, Teresa became aware that only God could really fill her heart. No human being could take God's place for her. And also the idea of religious life became so clear to her. So on her first communion day, on May the 7th, 1776, she made the first communion. And when she received Jesus for the first time, she made a commitment to him, said, I will be yours now and forever. And so then, um, no matter what happened, um, she relied on the Lord and she kept her promise. She consecrated herself to God and then look, and she also you know, brought about the life of a new family in the church. Yes. And, and we, we refer to her as venerable. What yes. makes her venerable? What, what is so important and special about her Catholic life? Uh, a religious and life that made her uh, venerable. venerable. Well, venerable is a beautiful title. It means that the church has already um, spoken uh, to, uh, to the fact that she did actually practice all virtues, the theological virtues, mm -hmm. the moral virtues, the, the human virtues in a in heroic way. And therefore now the people of God can pray to her, uh, ask for her intercession, and um, you know rely upon you know upon her to plead their cause mm -hmm. in time of need. I'd yes. like to I'd like to ask Sister Joyce, uh, when you entered the order, and obviously you you got to learn the history of of the beginnings, uh, the founding of the Oblate Sisters. What was it about Mother Cassini that attracted you and and oftentimes I believe that when someone becomes a Catholic or, or enters religious life or whatever that process is there's a love connection they're loved into that what was that love connection between you and Mother Cassini? Well I have to really be honest in the sense that um, at my, the, my very beginnings my very first years in formation um, you know, it was a gradual learning about mother, and and real and trying to appreciate, you know, um, what her gift to the church. So that took some maturing, uh, because I think her spirituality is so profound and so sublime that it's something that a young girl has to grow into. But as and and now as I as I continue to teach our women in formation, sister and I, you know, are on the formation team, uh, my appreciation for her still is growing. And the idea, I think what really strikes me about uh, our founders is first of all, her, again, her, her, her love and understanding for the church and, and, her, and, her, and understanding the importance of the roles, let's say the role of the priest and, and his, um, and how important that is for 
the building up of the church, holy priests for, as Sister said earlier, for a strong laity. We're talking about the new evangelization today, and and you know the and the how the, there's the Holy Father. You know, challenging, if you will, encouraging priests to live what they preach, religious to do that. So Mother had that great understanding. Her great love for God and her great desire to be to do, immerse herself into the will to to the will of God, and how and this very much is is what the Church teaches today. The whole Second Vatican Council that the more we empty ourselves for another, follow God's will, the happier we're going to be. So she was just a, a, a woman, I think, of the, her, her, her spirituality transcends time and place. And, and I, I, I just marvel at that the, 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 the more I study her spirituality and reflect on it. And, and Sister Teresina, tell us what you would want the folks that are with us to remember and to know about uh, Mother Cassini. I would like the people to know that she was really an heroic person. She was, she was energetic, she was strong, but she loved God unconditionally. So I want them to know that really we needed to make God a priority in our lives, as she did. She loved God unconditionally, and she developed a desire to bring source to God because even in her time, the faith was not as strong. And so she wanted people to know that um, you know, God loved them and that no matter what, they need to be, get closer to him. And also she, um, the most sacred heart of Jesus revealed himself to her a few times and um, made her understand how ungrateful people were you know, in response to his love. And so she really wanted to console the sacred heart of Jesus and uh, do all kinds of sacrifice and to appease, um, you know, his uh, sadness. And we, his just, we just have one minute uh, left in our second segment. Tell us uh, if you believe, and I probably uh, would know the answer to this, if she prayed earnestly to her father, um, her natural father in heaven who had passed away, and through his prayers, encouraged her and enabled her to be as strong and as loving. Uh, definitely. Her father was, uh, you know, was a gentle, but he could speak to her heart. He, uh, he could really touch her. Her mother would never be able to do that. You know, her mother was, they were all, almost always at odds mm -hmm. with one another. But her father, because of, of his faith, because of his uh, strong belief in the Lord and relying upon the Lord, um, gave mother definitely the strength to be as strong as she was and also to surrender to God's will in everything in her life. We're going to talk a little bit more about all of that. We're going to take a quick break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Whether it's passing on medicine, a blanket, or something as simple as a glass of water, that's how compassion works. And that's how Mary Knoll works, hand to hand to hand. For nearly a hundred years, Mary Knoll's been passing on your help to the priests and brothers working in 26 countries around the world. Mary Knoll, an American Catholic organization, dedicates 86 cents of every dollar donated to their programs, serving the world's poor and powerless. And that's how it works. Compassion flows from your hand to the hand of someone in need. Hand to hand to hand. That's Mary Knoll. 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 Doesn't your child deserve the best education possible? Then you should consider a Catholic school where strong academics are offered in a safe, disciplined environment, where education is deeply rooted in the religious teachings of our Catholic faith, where graduation rates are exceptional, where outstanding teachers help your child reach his or her fullest potential in the classroom and in life. But you should consider a Catholic school for the most important reason of all. Your child is worth it. Welcome back to our show. Uh, Sister Joyce, tell us a little bit about um, where the Oblate Sisters are. They're not just here in the United States and they're not just in Italy where they were founded. What other countries can you find the Oblates? 
Well, our, the first country that we went to after the, the group came in 1949 uh, to the United States uh, was Brazil. And this was in 1966 when uh, Pope Paul VI had asked all the religious congregations to share their members with, um, with those people around the world who had not yet heard or, um, you know, the, the, the word of God. And so five of our sisters, I think, were, went in 1966 to, uh, to some uh, towns in Brazil, particularly the interior, and they worked with priests there that maybe one priest had, you know, a parish that was extended maybe a hundred miles and could get to these people, you know, every few months. And so the sisters worked with him in those areas. And so, so today I think we have five houses in Brazil. Then the next move uh, was in uh, 1992 when um, uh, we opened a house in India, in south southern part of India, and also a month later in Guinea-Bissau in West Africa. So once again, the bishops of those areas came to understand and know our charism. I think a, a big help in that area is because we are centrally located in Rome, and bishops pass by, and they, the word spreads about you know the the work of these of these particular sisters. So, uh, so we started a foundation again, as I said, in, in that year, um, 1992, in both countries. And today we're in three dioceses in India, and we have um, five, I think six houses, sister, is it yes, six? Yes. yes. And then in, um, in West Africa, we serve um, in two separate places. In the deep interior, again, working with the uh, first evangelization, and then also we have a spirituality center for priests. Then in 2009, another group of sisters went to Huecho, Peru, and uh, because once again, at the request of a bishop who had a great um, a desire that his young people, particularly those people that just finished, just received the sacrament of confirmation, would be able to seriously focus on their vocations and we knew that he knew that our sisters had that special that special bent, if you will, to help people follow their vocation. Uh, you know, Sister uh, Teresa and I had a, uh, the privilege of interviewing you not too long ago on wineskins, and where you talked about uh, uh, Mother Cassini. And in that interview, you mentioned to me about when you joined the order back in Italy, and uh, it was a wonderful story. Can you share that with us? Of course. Um, I knew that I needed to do something special with my life because of the redemptor. I owe my vocation to the redemptorist fathers. They would speak about the love of God so immensely, and um, so and then I decided I couldn't be like everybody else in my own hometown. I had to to get out of it and do something special. And there were sisters there. We were blessed with them, but they were dressed in in a dark. Um, blue, and I said to myself, mm -mm, I want to be a sister, I want to give myself to God, but I don't want to be a widow at my young age, because in those days, you know, darkness was associated with, um, uh, with the widows, and so God allowed me to meet one of the Obrit sisters, and uh, that was love at first sight, so that's the, the group I'm going to join, and it took very little to convince my mother uh, to let me go. She wouldn't let me go, so I went on a hunger strike. <laughs> and that really broke my mother's heart. She said, do you really want to go? I'll let you go, but please, you know, do it. And I was then very happy. And so um, I went to our sister. I didn't know much about the carriers. It's not like today that you shop around. Mm -hmm. That was one time I gave myself to God. That was it. There was no coming back. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> That's what brought me to the to the Oblis. Was really uh, I didn't know about the carries, I didn't know about the life. Was mainly at that, at the moment a habit at that time. Then little by little, as I went there, the sisters seemed to be like angels, and I hope to be I'll become like an angel like, like them in due time. <laughs> so that was you know really that's the story. You know I was young, I didn't understand a lot of you know many many things. Sure. But one thing I understood though that I want to love God and love him to the full. And, and to do that as a religious woman is mm -hmm. uh, the next step, the next level. And you, you chose that. You know, how often, and I reflect on my own uh, going into the seminary mm -hmm. and how, you know, I had a calling, but it was like in my high school years. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, let me try it out, mm -hmm. see if it's something that I'd like. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, 
you, you know right away that this is where you belong. Mm -hmm. and, and how important is it for uh, people, in particular for, for young women now, to look at religious life as an option f for finding fulfillment? Sister? That's right. Right, and I encourage women to to, apt, to really be open to that, because um, if it is there, if God is calling them to that particular way of life, then they know that they will they will be happy, they will be fulfilled in life, and 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 the only way you know that is by actually going and visiting. You know, they say come and see programs, but it's it's it's, it's the same thing as dating. How do you know if this? Uh, person is you know, supposed to be your spouse. You've mm -hmm. got to get to know them. You s spend time with them. The same thing with religious life. Go and visit. Spend some time and follow your heart. Sister, if someone is interested in learning more about the Oblate Sisters or religious life uh, in general, what can they do? Who do they contact? Website, phone number? Well, if they're interested in learning about religious life in general, the diocese has a wonderful website, and you can just click on Youngstown Vocations, you know, or just Google Youngstown Vocations, and um, our website will come up. For our order, it's the it's www.oblatesistersofshj.org, and the telephone number is three three zero. 759-9329. Ask for Sister Teresina, ask for Sister Joyce, or any sister, and, and they'll be able to direct you. We're down to the last uh, minute of our time together. What do you want to leave the folks that are with us, Sister Teresina, uh, primarily about Mother Cassini? What I would like them to know about Mother is that she was a person that gave everything to God. And so if she made uh, this commitment to love God with all their heart, I would like the people also to rejuvenate their faith, to renew themselves in the love of God and make God a priority in their lives. And Sister Joyce, one final comment mm -hmm. about religious life. Religious life is, is a beautiful vocation. It's a very important and essential vocation of the church today because it reminds all of us how important it is to love God completely and totally. And, the, and what happens when we do that, there's a real joy. And that joy is going to spread, uh, spread to others and call others to God. Sister Joyce Canditti, Sister Teresina Rosa, thank you so much for being with, with us and thank you uh, for sharing your charism with us, but also uh, sharing uh, the uh, hopefully beatification of your foundress, Mother Cassini. God bless you. Thank, thank you, you, Father. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda. By the time we can walk, each of us yearns for the joy that comes from being able to do for ourselves. Church World Service believes that being self-reliant is a joy everyone should share. So around the block or around the world, share the joy. Church World Service.